Welcome to part two of the shading video. In this half, we're going to learn to shade a cylinder. So you've got two options. You can either draw along with me during the video, or you can watch everything I do first, then have a go yourself. Whatever you do, I'm sure it will be brilliant. Please don't panic. It's really hard stuff that I'm trying to teach you, especially for the young ones that are watching this video. So just have a go, do what you can, and remember, the more you practice, the better you'll get. Let's talk about light. When an object is 3D, it's solid, you can pick it up like, like our can of tomato soup, it reflects light off it. So light will be reflected, it will also cast its own shadows. So if the light is coming from one direction, the light is going to hit the object and where the light hits the object, that is the highlight. So it's the brightest point, it's literally a reflection of the light source, so it's so, so bright. As the light goes round the object, it gets gradually, gradually away from the light source, so it becomes darker and darker and darker. And this point round here, which is the darkest point, is called the core shadow. So that's really, really dark, because it's the furthest point away from the light. The areas between the highlight and the core shadow are your mid-tones. So it's exactly what we've just been looking at. We've got our light tone, our mid-tones, which go round this object because it's a circle. So they go all the way round. And then we end up with our core shadow, which is our dark tone. This shadow here, this is called the cast shadow. So it's being cast by the object. The light shines on the object and it casts a shadow, a bit like my hand here. So my hand, because of the light I've got over here, is casting a shadow on my piece of paper. So I've set up this tin of tomato soup with a really bright light to show you what happens when the light hits the tin. So first of all, we can see that the lightest point is over here. This is, this is the highlight. This is where the light source is reflecting off the tin. Then as we start to come round here, it starts to get slightly darker and darker. So we're getting our mid-tones around here. By the time we get to here, this is our core shadow. This is our darkest point. So this is the darkest we can get because the light's around here. And so we've got a lot of shadow and a lot of dark tones around here. However, can you see that piece of light there going down there? That's called a reflective light. And that is the light reflecting off the white paper and bouncing back onto the object. So you quite often get a lot of reflective light. So when we're going to shade our tin, which we're going to do in a minute, I'm going to show you what we're going to do to show the reflective light. This shadow here, this is your cast shadow. So this object, the tin, is casting this shadow on the surface that it's sitting on. Okay. You can also see, because there's a lip on the top of the tin, that the light is bouncing off the side here. Therefore, behind that lip there, we've got quite a lot of shadow. And we've got a huge amount of light on this lip here, because it's bouncing off that side a bit. So we've got shadow here, and then it gets lighter as it comes around here. So these are all things we need to understand before we can shade an object. So whatever it is you're trying to draw, I want you to study it very, very carefully. I want you to think, where is the light coming from? Where are the shadows? Where's the darkest point? Where are those mid-tones? Then you'll find that as you start to shade your drawings, they'll become better and better, and they'll look more realistic. Let's have a go at shading our cylinder now we've had a look at the light. So we've got our light source coming from this direction. Therefore, our shadow is going to be really dark here. So that's going to be our core shadow is going to be over here. And then as it comes around towards the light, we're going to go into our mid-tones. Then we're going to go into our very, very light tones. 
we may have a bit of a reflective, sh reflective light here bouncing off the table and we're going to have a cast shadow there. So let's have a go. I think I'm going to use this grip so um, I'm going to have it on my palm, turn it over. I'm just going to start like that. What you'll notice when I'm shading is that I will I might use a variety of different techniques. So some of the different techniques I've been showing you, I might use some nice blending and smudging. I might then mix some cross hatching in if I want really, really dark tones. Um, I might use my blending stump. Um, I'll, I'll do a whole variety of things really until I'm happy with it. Now it's important to note that when you start your shading, you should start off quite light. There's no use going in as dark as this, first of all, because you can't take that away very easily, but you can add to it. So it's better to layer up your tones, get darker and darker rather than go in really heavy and then try and take it away, which is a bit tricky. You can use your rubber for doing highlights. Um, that works really, really well. But when you've got really, really dark pencil on there and you've got a few layers of pencil on, you'll find it doesn't work quite as well. So it's better to start off light and get heavier. So I'm going to start off like this. I'm using that grip, okay, so it's underneath, turned over, and I'm using the side of my pencil so I can get it quite nice and smooth. You can see I'm making sure that the lines I'm doing are actually going in a, in a curve. So we practiced our curves. So I want you to kind of practice that motion. We're doing a, an object that is circular. So we, there's no point in shading with straight lines. So we really want to try and go round our object. So I'm going, just starting to push a little bit more. And then as I come round, I'm gonna start to ease off like this, okay? Now, if you start to get stripes, so say I eased off too quickly and I went quite light like that, you can see I've got a big stripe down there. So what I would do, is I would gently blend them together. So I want to get another tone in there, really. So I've got quite dark, and I want a mid, and I want an even lighter mid tone. So you, you're just constantly going back over it, really, till you're happy with it. I'm gonna turn my paper around a little bit so that it's in the right place for me. And I'm getting lighter and lighter as we go round. Okay, so that's my first layer of tone. Again, around here, I'm going to now go um, back into a mid-tone. So this is my core shadow, so it's my darkest. I'm going to ease off a little bit because I would like to have a little bit of a, re a reflection there um, as I go around the corner. Okay, so that's a good start. Um, then we're going to, if we remember, there was a shadow cast here by the lip. So um, inside here... Oh, I can see all the writing coming through. I think I must have been writing on top of here. So we're going to go quite dark there. And then we're going to get lighter as we come over there. So we're getting our first layer on. Okay, you can see that it's not as dark as this. Now there's lots and lots and lots of layers and lots and lots of shading. But this is a really good start. Now, towards the bottom of the can, it's obviously going to be darker. Okay, the light was hitting higher up. So although this is the light side, it's still going to be a little bit of shadow down there. Okay. So we'll just start to build that up a little bit. Now, at the base of the can, that's going to be the darkest. And this shadow that's underneath is going to be really dark. Now, what have I got under there that's making that line? Can you see? You can see that it picks up absolutely everything underneath. Okay. So I'm getting my core shadow in there, my first layer of it. I'm going to switch to this grip because I want to get a little bit of detail in there. So I've got a tiny area, so I'm switching my grip back to this grip so that I've got more control. I can also push harder. Look how much harder I can push in this grip. So you just sort of vary it depending on what you're doing. So there's no rule. It's whatever you feel, whatever's working for you. You might find one grip easier than the other. And when you're switching techniques, you'll definitely need to switch grips as well. These are all things to practice. This is tricky. 
This week's lesson is a hard one. Shading is really um, hard to get to grips with and it takes a huge amount of practice. This is not something you will be able to do in one go. I suggest what you do with this video is that you watch it a few times and you practice maybe a little bit every day and then it will get easier and easier. So you can see how dark my cast shadow is there. I'm going to stop there because I'm getting to the edge of my, pen, my paper. Um, now this looks too light because I've got a really nice dark cast shadow. So I'm going to start working in to the can again. This is going to be really dark down the base here. So I've got a nice shadow down the bottom. I'm going to start to move up the can. I might switch back to this grip. Oh, I think I might need to sharpen that. Let's sharpen. Remember when we sharpen our pencils, we go all the way round. We don't do this because we end up sharpening one side of the pencil. There we go. That's nice and sharp. Now I can go back to using this grip again. I'm going to push a little bit harder now. See, I'm building up those really dark tones. Okay, and then I've still got to ease off again, so I've got to go over it again. So my mid tones, trying to avoid my stripes, not always easy. Gradually coming round to the front of the can. Okay, now if I want to make a really good highlight, I'm going to show you in a minute, then I'm going to use my rubber. So I'm leaving my reflected highlight there. If I want to make a really strong highlight, I can use my rubber like this and get in some really strong highlights, which I can then work back into again if I want to, if they're too strong. Sketching and drawing is really just a series of, you know, different developments. You're sort of developing the drawing all the time. You don't tend to draw once and go, yep, that was amazing. I didn't need to make any changes to that. Um, although when you're younger, you often think that if you can't do it right first time, then you're not very good at it, uh, which is really not the truth at all. So you'll find I'm always adjusting my drawings and go, oh, that doesn't look quite right. Let's, let's change that. Okay, you can see, the more I work into it, the darker these tones getting. I'm getting more range of tonal values. So I'm getting a nice core shadow there now. It's, it's, it's becoming a good depth of tone. Yeah, right. So, you see this is a problem, because remember I said we don't want any outlines. So there is a little trick we can use for that. What you can do is start shading the background. So you create edges by shading something else up to it. So, so I don't have to have this line, what I'm gonna do is shade my background. Okay, so you can just put in a little bit of shading or patterning, whatever you want to really. And then suddenly that line's gone. Just like that, okay? You can do the same around here. Now you can see, I'm starting to smudge it with my hand a bit. This is the problem with these lovely soft pencils. They do smudge all over the place. Um, so I'm going to shade up to that as well. And I can create a line. I can create an edge just by shading my background. So I can avoid my heavy outlines, which makes it look flat and 2D. You might like to do different kind of shading in the background. You could actually start using some cross hatching. Bit of scribbling. You see, I use all sorts of bits, all sorts of techniques. 
depending on what I'm in the mood for and what I think I need for the job. So it's quite nice to have a different bit of shading there. Then you could start shading. So I've still got my line here. This is my table. So I'm going to shade in an opposite direction to the wall there, if that's a wall or it might be sky or whatever it is. But just so it looks different, I'm going to shade across. Here I'm shading down. All these little things make a big difference in your drawings. So lots of contrast, making things stand out. So because I've shaded the table now, you can see my nice bright edge is standing out. And I can start to blend the table a little bit into that cast shadow. Again, I create my edge. And it's starting to look a lot better. Okay, now if we want to add detail to this cylinder and we wanted to make it into a can of soup, um, a bit like I did um, on this one, you would always start with your shading first. Then you can start to think, okay, now I'd like to um, add some of the swirls, for example, um, onto the lid. So it's got kind of like concentric circles going on um, in the middle. So you could just start to add those details on top. And where you've got dark tones, you could push a bit harder. And where it's lighter, push a bit lighter, even with your detail. So all of these things make quite a big difference, okay? And then if you want to put a label on there, exactly the same thing. Now, one problem that everybody has when they do labels is they forget they've done these lovely ellipses and they're all really nice and curved and they go and put a straight label on. Now, the label is going round the can, so the label's also going to be curved. So if I wanted to start adding a label, the top of my label would curve, exactly like this curve, okay? And the bottom of my label would also curve, like the bottom of the can, so they would match because they're circular they're going round the can okay now the sides of the label would match the side of the can the side of the can is straight so they would be straight okay now you can see here i'm using a much lighter line so we can start to adjust things when you put the label on so if you want to start adding detail on you can start to rub out little sections you can start to put the put the writing in, whatever you want, but just try and keep it the same tone as your drawing on top of, so that you still get the darkness on the label and the lightness on the label. Hopefully that makes sense. Before we shade our own tin, let's just take a look at these two drawings and compare them. On the left, we have a very 2D flat looking shape. It is a cylinder. It has got the ellipses and it's got the curve at the bottom. However, it's got a really heavy outline and it's also only been shaded with one tonal value. So it has a mid-tone all over it. No dark, no light, just one overall colour. This makes it look really flat and unrealistic. If we look at this drawing on the right, this is much more 3D. We've created a solid form. It looks like you could actually touch it. So we've got more than, probably more than three tonal values. We've got the highlight, then we've got a graduation of mid-tones, and then we've got a really dark tone there. So we've got lots of tonal values in there, making it more realistic. Really strong highlights, shadows, and no outline at all. So let's take a look at how we can do this. Now it's your go. So you're going to get a clean piece of paper, and I would like you to draw the can as we practiced with the ellipse. So you're going to make sure you get the ellipse on the top and then a nice matching curve on the bottom. So this curve has to match this curve and then your sides are straight. So draw that first of all, really, really lightly. Then you're going to have a little go at your shading. Okay, and see if we can improve on the first drawing that you did. 
If you draw a table behind it, you'll find it a lot easier because then you have got an area you can do a cast shadow on, you can do some background and it looks it makes it look 3D instantly if you place it on a table. So it all really helps. Try to avoid harsh outlines and one colour. So I would like you to include in your drawing three tones. I would like to see a really dark tone. So that is your core shadow. I'd like to see some mid tones and I'd like to see some really light tones. So your, your reflections, okay? And if you can, then I'd like you to attempt a cast shadow. So the shadow cast by the beans. You could try setting up your own tin of beans or your can of tomato soup or any can really at home with a nice bright light. That's quite a fun thing to do to have a look at shadows and light. I can't wait to see your work. So please, when you upload it, upload a photo um, and I'd like to hear how you get on. Good luck. Well done, everybody. You've made it to the end of this week's video. It was a really tricky one, but I'm really proud of all of you because some of you who are watching this video are really young and it's quite tricky things I'm trying to teach you. So I hope you enjoy the videos at the end of what Lola's been up to this week and I'll see you next week.